with Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3, the Tomorrowverse has officially come to an end. At times, the ride was a bit rough, but I believe the universe had its bright spots. To sum up what the Tomorrowverse was, it was a collection of films and shorts taking place in a universe that is the outcome of the events that took place in Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. The films include Superman Man of Tomorrow, Justice Society World War II, Batman The Long Halloween Part 1 and 2, Green Lantern Beware My Power, Legion of Superheroes, Justice League War World, and Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1, 2, and 3. And the shorts consist of Adam Strange, Amandy, The Last Boy on Earth, Blue Beetle, Constantine, The House of Mystery, and The Losers. I think this universe started really well from Mana Tomorrow up to Long Halloween Part 2, and I honestly think Crisis on Infinite Earths kind of tied everything together pretty well. It made War World feel bigger than it did beforehand and followed up the cliffhanger from the end of Long Halloween Part 2. I didn't love all of Crisis. Part 2 was important to some specific players, and their story story threads do have a lot of payoff in part 3. I'm sure it's very faithful to the comics as well, but it overall just wasn't for me. Part 1 was decent and part 3 was actually really good in my opinion. Overall, it was a satisfying enough conclusion, I guess. So the start to the Tomorrowverse was relatively strong and the ending was satisfying enough, but everything between is why I hesitate to say this was a great universe. Some of these movies were a bit rough and it felt like they kept making similar mistakes in films like Beware My Power and Legion of Superheroes. War World was by far the worst film in this continuity, if you ask me. It's pretty crazy how much they end up revisiting it in Crisis on Infinite Earths. So what I'm going to do to kind of break this universe down is briefly go over the villains and heroes before getting into the substance of the actual films. And I'll save my more in thorough thoughts of each movie for my final Tomorrowverse ranking. But if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you likely have an idea of how I feel about each of these films. Trouble on my left, trouble on my right. I've been trouble on my Honestly, any villain outside of Parasite and Man of Tomorrow, any of the Bat villains featured in Long Halloween, and I guess the Anti-Monitor in Crisis Part 3 left very little impact. War World barely has a villain, Parallax was awful and Beware My Power, Sinestro was wasted, the villain in Justice Society was forgettable, and Brainiac was such an extremely underwhelming reveal in Legion of Superheroes. Psycho Pirate in Crisis Part 2 would probably be the only other one I credit for being relatively strong. Even though I really didn't care for that film as a whole, he also plays a part in part 3, so that kind of makes up for it. And I guess here is the most fitting place to shout out Lobo as well. He's more of an anti-hero, but he added a lot to Man of Tomorrow, and the little screen time he had in War World was the highlight of that film. Sadly, I won't be touching on a ton of heroes because not a lot of them do anything that substantial. An Elseworlds version of Wonder Woman plays a big role in Justice Society, and the Wonder Woman of the main Tomorrowverse Earth plays a large part in War World. She didn't get a ton to do in any of the three parts of Crisis, not that I remember at least. She was always kind of there though, but it's Wonder Woman, so of course I wanted so much more out of this version of the character. Green Lantern has his own movie, and that's about it for him and Green Arrow to be honest. They get a bit to do in Crisis, but I'd say Jon Stewart's role in that saga is only memorable because because of the interactions he has with and surrounding Constantine, whom I'll get to later on. Okay, that's it for the shout out. so on to the heroes that I feel get a decent amount of development and screen time in the Tomorrowverse, and we may as well start in chronological order with Superman. <laughs> I mean, he's Superman. Man of Tomorrow establishes he and his morals extremely well. I praise that about the film a lot because Clark's morality is by far the most important part of his character and why Supes is who he is. He again gets some play in Legion of Superheroes, interacting with Supergirl, of course, and working a case with Batman that would lead into War World. His role in Legion was obviously smaller, so he's not expected to do a lot, which he doesn't, but War World just feels so uneventful 
role until the last 10 minutes of the movie. They at least had showcased his leadership within a team somewhat before we got to Crisis. Superman definitely plays a large role in parts 1 and 3, but 2 was mostly dedicated to Supergirl, the Monitor, and Psycho Pirate, although you do get Supergirl and Superman moments in that film. I love seeing the formation of the League and his interactions with them, although I wish we had seen that sooner than Part 1 of Crisis. And of course, any interaction he has with Luther in any part of Crisis and Man of Tomorrow is great. He's obviously easily one of the most important characters in this universe. Martian Manhunter also appeared in Man of Tomorrow, and I think he complements the film extremely well. There are a lot of parallels between not only him and Superman, but also Lobo. Speaking of, just like Lobo, Manhunter also appears in the final stages of War World. And for anyone that hasn't seen War World, I don't blame you, but also for anyone that hasn't yet watched all of Crisis, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to spoil what happens with the character for anyone going in blind. Now on to The Flash, who first appeared in Justice Society World War II. I enjoy the fact that Barry visiting a parallel world actually became important in Part 1 of Crisis. Before then, the events of that movie almost felt pointless, because aside from the JL setup with Superman, nothing was really carried forward. Let's not mention Brainiac and Legion of Superheroes. Until we got to Crisis on Infinite Earths, lovely that it paid off though. I also think the little they do with Barry and Iris at the beginning of the film was a great foundation for their relationship in the Tomorrowverse, which of course carried over to Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1, a film that is very much Barry's. Through this time hopping adventure, we really get to see Barry and Iris' love on full display. We also see the formation of the Justice League, which Flash is entirely credited for. He has brief encounters with the Spectre from House of Mystery and Barbarian Bat from War World. For anyone not aware, that's just a prehistoric version of Batman, basically. He interacts with the crime syndicate of Earth 3 as well, but also, of course, Constantine multiple times throughout this film. And we will get back to that later, because although he only appears in two full films within this universe, he is, of course, along with Constantine, to blame for the Tomorrowverse even existing and the crisis coming. <laughs> But for now, let's move on to Batman, who of course first appeared in Long Halloween Parts 1 and 2, although he was referenced in the very first film, Man of Tomorrow. Long Halloween is all about Bat learning to become a detective, which is an aspect of the film I adore. The two-parter does a great job of establishing him and his world, including of course his Rhodes Gallery, and his relationships with characters like Gordon, Alfred, and Selina. He would again appear in Legion of Superheroes alongside Superman, as I mentioned earlier. You really needed Batman here though because their small subplot was a detective one, which better expands on everything he learned over the year chasing Holiday. Then War World happened, and like I said, his chapter of the film is as Barbarian Bat until the final stages where he's present day Batman, and Barbarian Bat was pretty bizarre and whatever. Then in Crisis on Infinite Earths, we get to see Batman with the full league and a ragtag version of the Bat family, including Robin, Helena Wayne Huntress, Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, Batgirl, and Batwing. Multiple Robins, really. And in part three, he is a massive part of getting to the root of the crisis, why it's all happening, and who's the cause. The interactions between Batman and Constantine are probably some of the best in this whole universe, in my opinion. But speaking of John Constantine... Constantine's first appearance in this continuity is technically a house of mystery. In the short, he is facing the consequences of his actions following the events of Apocalypse War. At the end of that film, he of course sends Barry off to rewrite history yet again, so his punishment overseen by the Spectre is essentially a living hell where he's ripped apart by his own friends and loved ones. But we of course figure out that the Spectre didn't bring that part of this existence onto him. He was experiencing all of those things because he truly believed he wasn't worthy of love or companionship. Then John is sent into an unknowing void of the universe, but we see him again as a street beggar warning everyone that the end is coming. I love this subtle appearance from him to lead in a crisis and beware my power. 
He very much plays the role of Pariah from the comics in Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1, witnessing the death of multiple worlds, unable to die himself. He literally says he's tried to kill himself. Look, as much as Constantine is really the root of this entire problem, that being the Anti-Monitor, he's kind of the best character in this entire universe. Even though there are characters that get more screen time than him, what he has is so substantial to the Tomorrowverse and its existence, he really helps elevate this entire universe. Obviously, he's the only one with the memories of the previous universe and what occurred in Apocalypse War, and that is a vital part of the finale in Crisis Part 3. I won't go into it here as I've already made a separate video on what happens in the DCAMU after the credits began to roll in Apocalypse War, but John Constantine is very much the anchor of this universe, and he's the only one that makes sense to be. Supergirl's introduction is Legion of Superheroes, and this film might as well be called Supergirl because she and Brainiac 5 are really the only characters this film cares about. The connection she forms with Brainy is done well enough though, I kinda think this film was done just as a precursor to Crisis, because of course they disappear at the end of Part 1. Then Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 2 is dedicated to Supergirl as well, a large portion of the movie taking place in one room between her and the Monitor, and of course Part 3 is her big Big sacrifice in Superman's reaction, but losing her is great. She's definitely a character needed for this universe to work given they were leading to crisis all along, and overall she was good even if the films she was at the forefront of weren't my favorite. Speaking of the films, let's just rapid fire off my thoughts about each. Mainly how important they are to the universe and if they were worth watching. The quality of the Tomorrowverse films definitely vary to say the least. Man of Tomorrow was a strong start and established this world fairly well. It showed us who Clark and Superman were and what he believed in. The characters used were paralleled with each other really well. Justice Society World War II was the first exploration of the multiverse and for that it does come back into play later on in Crisis on Infinite Earths. The Justice Society themselves were fine, plot points in this film were pretty predictable, Flash and Wonder Woman are by far the standout characters of the film. Batman The Long Halloween does a fantastic job of establishing Batman in his world, this installment doesn't really have an overall connection to the Tomorrowverse as a whole, other than the characters reappearing in future installments. It and Man of Tomorrow kind of have that in common, but I'd argue they benefit from that fact in a lot of ways. Constantine the House of Mystery is really the only short I discussed in detail, and it's extremely vital to this universe. It is essentially the bridge between the DCAMU and the Tomorrowverse. Beware My Power and Legions of Superheroes are pretty similar. They have two characters at the forefront of the movie and both try to do way too much with the screen time they are given. A lot of the plot threads feel lazy in both, and most characters in each of the movies feel wasted. War World in retrospect purely feels like setup for crap. The film itself is relatively boring and nothing really stands out from it. Crisis on Infinite Earths overall was solid. Part 1 is very much Barry's film, Part 2 is focused around Supergirl and Psycho Pirate, and Part 3 is very Constantine and Batman focused. Superman and Lex play a fairly critical role in the story as a whole as well. I think the lingering connection to Apocalypse War and the DCAMU is something that greatly benefits the story and helps elevate the Tomorrowverse as a whole. So my recommends for this universe would be Man of Tomorrow, Justice Society, The Long Halloween, House of Mystery, and Crisis on Infinite Earths. Those are the films I believe are worth a watch at least once. In the grand scheme of things, Beware My Power and Legion of Superheroes are more or less just two middling movies that don't mean much to the overall narrative and aren't even that entertaining in their own right. War World is relatively important to Crisis, but honestly, I'd just watch a recap for that film or something instead of watching the full 90 minutes. As a standalone universe, the Tomorrowverse definitely isn't the greatest, and I probably do prefer the DC AMU, but that universe also had its fair share of misses in my opinion. But especially after Crisis Part 3, you can't really look at the Tomorrowverse as its own entity. As I expected from the start, this is very much just an extension of the DC AMU. I mean, the universe literally wouldn't exist without the ending of Apocalypse War. As a whole, the Tomorrowverse is alright, it has some bad installments, yes, but it did do some good things. Do I wish this universe had been better? 
Sure, yes. Do I think this universe was a waste of time? Not really, no. Man of Tomorrow is in my top half of animated Superman movies, and The Long Halloween is probably my favorite animated Batman movie since The Dark Knight Returns. It was fun to revisit the DCAMU, primarily Apocalypse War, through Constantine. I've seen people calling this set of films a failure, and I think that does apply to some of the individual installments. As a unit, I wouldn't classify it as a failure though, so I believe that take is a bit unfair. But those are just my thoughts, let me know what you thought about the Tomorrowverse down in the comments below, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, I will see you guys next time. On my own, here we go.